again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. Yes! And today I am very pleased to present to you the 3D Cluster Stitch Hat. Yes! Now I've done a shawl previously using this stitch, and with much tweaking and finagling and figuring, I figured out how to turn it into a hat. This is such... Ah, oh, I love the texture. It's so squishy. It is also reversible, actually. It's got an awesome texture. It's a little bit tricky initially, but once you get the hang of it, it is really not that bad whatsoever. Now, for this particular project, I used... Do, 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 this is Lion Brand's Mandala Ombre. Never used this before until this project. Found it at Walmart. This video is not sponsored, but you guys know I like to let you know what it is that I use if you want to duplicate the results. And check out that colorway. Gorgeous. It almost looks like a sort of stone wash, tie-dye kind of appearance to it. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is 100% acrylic. It is 344 yards, and the, the weight is approximately a weight of four, and they recommend using a size I crochet hook. Now, I used a size J, which I have right here, and a size J is a six millimeter hook. Now, of course, based on your tension, your gauge, you can go up or down. Personally, I found that a size J worked out well. Also, for the, for the, the ribbing, for the brim, I did go down a hook size to a size I, which is a 5.5. You could also go down a little bit further to a size H, which is a five millimeter hook. Play around, have fun. Now, um, the really cool thing about using this yarn is that with one skein, okay, not only did I make this hat, but I also made this hat <laughs> as well with the same stitch using the same skein of yarn. And so if you look at the, the transition of colors, now you start at the crown and you work your way towards the brim. And then since I had the same ball, well, starting at the crown, working my way down. So you can see a really neat transition of color. And then, so that I could show you what one of these hats looks like using a solid color, this I did using Pound of Love. And yes, it's bright. <laughs> this is Pound of Love in the colorway of Cherry. And I think it looks just as gorgeous utilizing a solid color. Now, that being said, where, 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 where is, ah, here it is. Okay, now today I'm going to be using more Pound of Love in the colorway of, I believe this is denim. And uh, so I'm going to use this as much as I would like to use the ombre. Not going to be using this because it is a very busy yarn and the pattern itself can be a little bit confusing as far as where you're stitching into, at least at first. So I am going to go slow. Another thing that you're going to need are stitch markers. That will be very, very, very helpful. And I don't mean the, the rings, the solid closed rings. You're going to want ones that open like a safety pin, or you could use a little scrap of yarn, but I'm going to be using the lockable stitch markers. Um, at least initially, to show you uh, the, the transition of the, the clusters that we're going to be working with. So, that being said, let's get started. All right, first things first with round one. And just as a recap, I am going to be using a six millimeter hook and my Pound of Love yarn. And also, these are my stitch markers. Now, I don't need them just this second, but they lock into place relatively easy. And yes, these, I would strongly suggest using these, at least initially when you are doing this particular pattern, um, you know, at least for the first couple of rounds and at least 
until you get familiar with the pattern itself. So that being said, we're going to start with our slip knot and a chaining up of four. One, two, three, four, and slip stitch to that first chain to create a ring. There we are. And now this is sort of similar to how we start with the, the grannies, but instead of three double crochets, it's going to be groupings of two double crochets separated by a chain one space. So start off by chaining up three. One, two, three. And that counts as our first double crochet. And then into that center ring, double crochet, our second. So we've got one group. We need a total of five little groups here. So chain one, and then into that center ring, two more doubles. And also I'm crocheting over my tail as I go, makes it easier in the long run. So we've got two groups, chain one, two more doubles. Okay, three groups, chain one, two more doubles. Okay, chain one and two more doubles. Chain one, and then we're going to finish off this round by slip stitching to the top of this first chain three that we did. There we go. And for good measure, slip stitch into the next double crochet. Okay. And that is the end of round one. So it is five groupings of two double crochets separated by chain one spaces. Okay, round two. We don't need the stitch markers yet, but we soon will. Okay, so from here, going to, and it, we did our slip stitch, so this is the, the first double crochet that we're going to be working with. So chain one, and then we're going to do a front post double crochet around this post right here. Okay. And then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then front post around the next two double crochet stitches. So front post, and then front post. and then into the next chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then front post around the next two double crochets. And then into the next chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Front post around the next two doubles. Okay, next chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then around the next two double crochets, front post double crochets. OK, 
Okay. And then last but not least, now let's just check something real quick. We've got one. I'm counting my chain one spaces. So I've got one. And then I've got two. Three. Four. And we need a fifth one. So into this next chain space right here. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and around this double crochet here, front post. Okay, and then slip stitch to the top of this front post that we just did. In the beginning. Okay, now to clarify this a little bit, what might help is at this point in your chain one spaces, you can put your markers. So I'm going to do that right now to show you what your piece should look like. And if you can't find your chain one spaces that easily, you can count your four double crochets and then there's another chain space. Now you could use safety pins. However, I have found that those have a tendency of getting caught on the yarn. And that's a bit of a problem. little hinge doohickeys. All right, so your piece should look something like this. All right, so that is round two. Okay, round three. All right, so we left off by doing a slip stitch. And so we have in the middle here four double crochets. Now this right here it looks like a double crochet, but actually it's the chain one that we did so that we could get the height for that first front post that we did. But technically, yes, that is four double crochets. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the work and into these first two double crochets slip stitch. So into here, slip stitch, and slip stitch into the next stitch. There we are. Okay, so now what we're going to do is chain up one and around this first stitch, front post, all right, now into this chain space here where we have our marker, we're going to be doing an increase, okay? And to do the increase, that means to do into that chain one space a double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, and then another double crochet. And then around this first double crochet here, front post, double crochet. Now the reason why I fiddled with the stitch marker is to prove a point about the increase. Now what I mean by that is, okay, so we have the front post, we have a front post here on either end, then we have a double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, double crochet. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to move the stitch marker up in between the two double crochets that we did in the middle. And that's why the stitch markers are important, at least initially, to this particular pattern. So it was down here. 
Now it needs to be in between these two middle double crochets. Like so. And that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of this round. Okay, so let's do a couple more. Okay, so now skipping these two middle double crochets, we're going to be going directly into this corner here. So, so skipping these two here, going around this post here. Get my stitch marker out of the way. Scoot. Okay, around this post here, front post, double crochet. And then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, and double crochet, and then front post, double crochet around this first one here. Now, I didn't adjust my stitch marker while I was doing that, but now I'm going to scoot it on up in between these two double crochets here. Personally, I find it's easier if you just sort of scoot the marker off to the side and then deal with it once you're done with the corner. There we are. So in between those two middle ones, not into the chain spaces, but in between the two doubles. All right, so let's do another one. So again, skipping these two middle double crochets, going around the post, the first post of that corner, front post double crochet, and then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, and then another double crochet, and then front post around the next front post. Okay, and then move our marker. Again, going in between those two doubles in the middle. Okay, just gonna plot some more yarn and get myself situated, hang on. Okay, so moving right along, going to do the next corner. So again, skipping these two next double crochets, going around the post of that first one in the corner, front post double crochet, and then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, double crochet, and move the marker. Oh, wait, hang on, sorry. Front post around that first front post. That was close, no cigar. Okay, so got the front post, the front post, and then double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, double crochet. Okay, now move the marker. and then put it in between the two stitches in the middle. There we go. And then we've got one more corner to go. So skip these two in the middle, front post around the front post, and then into the chain one space, double, chain one, two doubles, Chain one, double, and front post. OK, 
Okay, then move the marker. All right. And then last but not least, we have to skip these two middle double crochets here. So we're going to slip stitch directly into the top of this first front post double crochet right here. Okay, so slip stitch into there. And that is the end of row three. Now, yes, it looks a little bit wonky right now, but we're getting there. We are making progress. We are getting there. And before long, we won't have to worry about any sort of weird increases or anything. Um, it'll go a lot smoother. But in the meantime, bear with me. I won't steer you wrong. All right, let's continue on to round four. Okay, round four. It's going to be a little bit easier than the last one, which I'm sure you'll approve of. Okay, so we did our slip stitch to the last or first uh, front post. And so right now what we need to do is we need to turn the work. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is slip stitch into the first two stitches. Slip stitch and slip stitch. Okay, and we are going to deal with our first corner. Okay, so from here, going to chain up one, front post around the first stitch here that we have. And into this chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then front post around the next stitch. Okay, now below, you can see our stitch marker. Well, what we need to do is we need to increase this just a little bit by, but not by anything major. We're just going to do a chain one space. Okay, then we're going to continue on in the same fashion that we just did this cluster right here. So going around to this next double crochet, going to do a front post. And into this chain one space, double crochet chain one, double crochet, and front post around the next stitch. And that is the first of five corners. Okay, so now at this point, what you might want to do is move the stitch marker up one into that chain one space in between our two clusters. See, we have a cluster here, and we have a cluster here. We've got our chain space separating them right in the middle. Okay, so that's why in the last round I said it was an increase round because we went from essentially one big cluster and now we've got two that we have to work with. So let's continue on and do the next corner. So again, we need to skip these two double crochets in the middle there. So skipping, skipping, going to the next one because we've got our chain space here, right there. So around this double crochet with a front post and then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, front post around the next stitch and chain one to get to the next grouping of the corner. Front post into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and front post. Okay. 
and then move your marker up into the chain space in between the clusters. There we are. So we've got two. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, skipping the next two doubles, going around that third with a front post. And then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, front post around the next stitch, chain one, front post around the next stitch, into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then front post around the next stitch. Move the marker up. There we go. Okay, and we've got two more corners to go. Give me one sec. All right, so we're gonna be following suit the same way with the remaining two corners. So again, skip these two doubles going around the front post of that next stitch into the chain one space, double crochet. Make sure you get all of your plies, otherwise it doesn't work. There we go. So it's into that chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, front post around the next stitch, okay, chain one, front post around the next stitch, into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, front post around the next stitch, and that's this corner completed. There we go. One more corner to go. Okay, skip the next two stitches, going into that third with a front post. Into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And front post around the next stitch. Okay, and then chain one. Front post around the next stitch. And then into the chain one space double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then front post around the next stitch. Okay, now to finish this off, going to slip stitch into the top of that first front post that we did, and move my marker up. Don't wanna forget about him. He's important too. There we go. So that, my dears, is the end of round four. Beautiful on both sides, don't you think? Love it. Okay, on we go. Okay, round five, we're going to be doing further increasing. So last stitch that we did was a slip stitch to the front post. Well, we got to turn the work again, slip stitch into the first two stitches, there we go. Okay, so first things first, chain up one, front post around this first stitch, into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, 
double crochet, and front post. Okay, so that's our first cluster. Well, where we had our, our chain space in the last round, we need to make a new cluster, and then to do another cluster on top of the cluster that we did as well before. So what we're going to have to do is around this double crochet here, front post around this one, then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and front post around this next stitch, and then we have to build on top of this cluster, so front post around the next stitch, and into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and front post. And that is one full corner where we have now three complete clusters. And the easiest way to see it is, okay, so we have our chain one space, four double crochets, another chain one space, four double crochets, and another chain one space. So what I need to do is I need to sort of scoot my marker into this middle chain one space because we've got one, two, and three. So into that second chain space that we created, we need to move our marker into that space. There we go. All right, so that is one full corner done. Let's tackle the other four, shall we? Okie dokie. So again, skipping these next two stitches, going into the next double crochet with a front post, and then into this chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then into the next two stitches, front post, double crochet, front post, front post, and then into this chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then front post around the next two stitches, and then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and front post. Okay, and then move the marker up into the middle of that chain space right there. So just sort of scooting it over and up. we go. Let's do the next one. Skipping the next two doubles, going to that third with a front post, into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then front post the next two stitches, And then into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. I got my double, chain one, and double. And then front post around the next two. There we go. And then into this chain space, double, chain one, double. and front post around the next stitch. Okay, 
move your marker up. Okay. And then we will do the next the two more to go. Okay. All right, so again, skipping these next two doubles, going into the third with a front post. And then into the chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, front post into the next stitch, and the stitch thereafter. So that's my front post, double, chain one, double, two front posts into the chain one space, double, chain one, double, okay, front post around the next two stitches, come on, front post, front post, and into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. And front post. Okay, move your marker up, over one, up one. There we go. One more to go. We got this. Okay, so skip the next two stitches, going into the next stitch with a front post, into the chain one space, double, chain one, double, front post around the next, two stitches, one and two, There we go. Into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. And front post around the next two stitches. Into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. and front post around the next stitch. Okay, move your marker over and up. By the way, I think that these stitch markers are clover, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're clover. Okay, and then to finish up this round, going to slip stitch into the top of this first front post double crochet that we did. Okay, da 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 dum. We're getting there. We most certainly are. All right, my dears. So that is going to conclude the first part of this tutorial. And the reason why I'm breaking it up is due to time constraints, but also because I really want to be thorough. That is why I'm taking the, you know, the, the extra steps and going the extra mile for you, because I know that this looks very intimidating and it looks complicated. I get that. I totally understand that. And that is why I'm breaking it up into a second video so that I can be more thorough for you because as gorgeous as this is, it's also a little bit scary, and I get that, and that's why I want to walk you through it as best I can so that we can do it together. All right, so listen, if you are liking this so far, please give a little thumbs up, a little thumbs up button down below. Show your support. I appreciate your appreciation, and uh, do stay tuned. Hit subscribe because part two is going to be on its way so that you can finish making this awesome sauce hat, and uh, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.